Right, I need to get this uh, mechanism removed. So we've got to take this flap off first so that we can unscrew the mechanism from the bottom. So, I've never taken one of these off before. Let's have a look what we can see. I've got some sort of clips that we can take off there. I think in some springs, we need to make sure we don't launch those springs. I'll get some small pliers and see if I can pull those off. Okay, that's the flap removed. So we, we had two little clips and two springs. So we'll pull that down. And now we have a look underneath. We've got a oh, missing screw there. Interesting. There's a missing screw there. And then there's two there. So there's three hex screws, and it looks like it should be four, but one's missing. So we need to get those removed. Just to show you, there's actually two more screws I didn't originally see. So I've lifted the playfield up fully to be able to get better access. Now, while I've got this playfield up, that's broken off of something. I wonder what that's from. We're on the bench and we need to get this coil out. This is one hell of a heavy mechanism. Um, so we need to, how do we get this apart? The screws for the coil are on the inside, so I think we need to take out these two screws here and these two screws here. That should hopefully release this part of the mechanism. Slide it off the armature and it's now removed. And we've got, I think we can just get away with taking two of these screws off. So we'll just take these bottom two off and that'll release the coil. I thought I'd just wrap, rip the label off the uh, coil so we could see the damage. It's not obvious, but it's very lumpy. And it smells horrible. It smells of melted plastic. Um, you can't really see it very well, but it's blackened inside the middle there. And this, this uh, sleeve. That sleeve is well and truly melted in. So, hmm, this is a non standard coil. So, the wires go through and basically join straight onto the wires of the coil. So, I think we've got to modify the replacement coil. The replacement coil that was sent under warranty. Um, it's a Williams coil. These are actually just rebadged Williams parts basically in Jersey Jack pinballs. And we can see it's an FL11753 flipper coil. And so this is the Jersey Jack label, this is a Williams label. The only thing is, this is a special version where the wires go through. Uh, to get this to fit, I'm going to have to cut these tabs off. Also, cut the diodes off because diodes in the connector on the Jersey Jack one. So let's get these wires out, and then we need to just modify this and snip off those uh, tabs. Tabs down, we've got this soldered on solidly now, so we can refit that coil. We just need to grab the sleeve. And then the other thing I've got to do is replace the switch on the target. This is the uh, target switch. Again, it's a Williams part. It's the same as the Medieval Madness Troll switch. So we've got these screw holes uh, to basically screw the actual target to. And then, other than that, it's a standard leaf switch. Now, this one is a bit wobbly, and even though there's a decent gap between the switch contacts, basically when the game's playing, it wobbles, and it's triggering the switch. So, it's going to replace that, and then hopefully we won't get the coil burning out again. Here's another flaw with the game. Uh, after only a few games, if we have a look at the target, there's like a light guide underneath. It's actually hard to get it to focus if you, you'll have to give me a second. So basically it's two plastic rectangles to, to basically direct the light. And if we can get a focus on it, you can see it's actually got several cracks in it. This one has only been working for a few games as this, this, this mechanism has been disabled because the coil burnt out on it. But we can see that there's uh, several cracks in that and another target I've got is completely disintegrated. They've all got cracks in them. So that part needs replacing on all four targets after probably 20, 30 games. So they, they are flawed and need replacing. And the target part to replace it. Uh, one thing to note is that there's a little plastic space from the original so we need to keep hold of that and transfer it to the new switch. The other thing to note is that these are very thin plastic they're very lightweight. I can't imagine these are going to last against uh, multiple ball hits for very long. So I imagine you need a spare set of those if you're on a Hobbit. The coil sleeve and switch fit replaced. We can now see it's now working freely, so we can go and reinstall this in the game. 
installed and now we can uh, re-enable it in the game and test it. Test mode, let's just test the pop-up. There you go, it's popping up and holding. The up switch is registering, let's just quickly test the... Uh... There you go. That seems to be working fine, let's just bash the cap a little to make sure it's not registering vibrations anymore, and it isn't, so that's good. We can give it a playtest in-game.